cool. Hey guys, I just came back from Mercedes-Benz World where I was unveiling my brand new GT Ford up. And I've got to come back to Madrid because we're going to review its little brother, the new CLA 45S. So, the new CLA 45S. It really does look like the AMG GT Ford, or doesn't it? Look at that. But that wasn't always the case with the CLA 45, was it? If we go back to the original one, it was a bit of an odd proposition. That car was more looking like an A-Class with a boot added to it, yet it didn't really have the styling that you would require, especially considering the fact that you would get reduced headroom, and it, in the end, really just ended up looking like a poor man's C63, whereas the A45, especially with the aerodynamic package, always looked the pick of the bunch. But now, it's a completely different proposition in terms of design on this car. The new one has taken the opportunity to become a design icon by itself as to, and to really sit as the baby AMG GT four-door. And you, when you look at the design, you see it immediately. Look at the, especially the front air intakes here. This whole thing here, Look how it looks like compared to, say, my AMG GT four-door. You can see that exact resemblance. It's the family of coupes that they're trying to make very, very obvious here. You see the width of the car, the bonnet bulges, everything about it looking different. It doesn't look now like an A45 with a boot on it. Instead, it looks like, again, the smaller brother of the AMG GT four-door. Again, accentuated further, We've got the wheels that are in the same design as the four-door, but in 19 inches. And in fact, when you look at the rear of the car as well, so much more handsome, way nicer looking than the new CLS. In some angles, it even looks better than the GT four-door. And you've got, of course, the quad pipes, which are signature on the 45 series as well. And then if we look at the other pack that's available, that's the aerodynamic package. It makes things even more exciting. Gloss black in the front. We've got the extra flicks on the side the devil horn boot spoiler, the more aggressive rear diffuser as well. Looking really, really exciting. You know, it can make you even second guess getting a C63 coupe just on aesthetics itself, and I would never normally say that. It doesn't have the increased width that the A45S has. That's because the CLA already had the wider track, so it doesn't look quite as extreme on the front end, but it really does look like a small four-door GT, and I think that's what this car is kind of relying on. But that is just the aesthetics. And it's important that this car differentiates itself with aesthetics because that's what these four-door coupes are all about. But when you compare it to the previous car, just in terms of technicality, it's also a completely different animal. The old one used a front bias Haldex four-wheel drive system mated to that four-pot turbo engine. And that gave it a certain type of drive. It was mainly front-wheel drive and the rear would only kick in when needed. Now, this car is completely, completely different. Again, like the GT four-door, it's got 4Matic Plus with drift mode, although it's executed in a different way. Now we've got two uh, multi-disc rear clutches per rear wheel, which individually control the torque of each wheel with something that AMG call AMG Torque Control. And essentially, you get A, better grip, and B, we can activate drift mode just like in its bigger AMG cousins, and really make this car a completely different proposition just in terms of that element. Now, of course, the engine has been completely redeveloped as well. It is still a two litre, four pot, single twin scroll turbo engine, but now it has been redesigned from the ground up to provide better cooling, a lot more power, more torque, a higher RPM, a natural curve in terms of its power delivery, so it feels like a naturally aspirated engine. All of that has been done with numerous, numerous different changes, and we did a whole video on this out of Falterbach, where we showed the whole new system of how they build the engine. There's a whole new room, it looks awesome. I'll leave the link below. You need to see how these engines are made. But in summary, they switched the engine 180 degrees around for cooling and to move the exhaust valves to the back. They also took learning from the GT2 door and the GT4, though, the top V8 engines, and brought that learning into this car to help it cope with more power, to help it cool better. 
and to help provide an experience that is a lot more similar to the bigger engine AMG cars. And the power we get out of it then in the S model is 421 brake horsepower, 500 newton meters of torque, and I expect a very good zero to 60 time as well. Now, of course, that engine is mated to a brand new eight speed box. Uh, the previous one was a seven speed and alongside suspension changes specifically for the 45 and loads of stiffening to the body in white, this should turn this car into a completely different proposition. Now, of course, there is a shooting brake version as well, which looks like this. Now, how awesome does that look? This is the only full fat AMG shooting brake that you can get now that the CLS 63 has been discontinued, and that is just one tasty wagon. I love fast wagons. You can see as far as the roof line shape of the shooting brake goes, it stretches the window line of the standard CLA 45S. You end up with a little spoiler at the top of the roof as well, but the rest of it carries through that same sexy design and ends up looking like a really stunning shooting brake, probably the best looking one that Mercedes have ever made. To me, it kind of looks like a mix between an A45 and a CLA where you get the best of both worlds. There's loads of room in the boot. If you look at the boot capacity, we're looking at 505 liters, but it's not just that. The boot opening is significantly wider than the previous car, so now we've got 871 millimeters instead of 635 and heck you can even fit a fatty like me in the back quite comfortably hmm all in all for me this is the no-brainer of the entire 45s series so guys inside the cla 45s is exactly what you expect it to be amg performance seats unique interiors the best one being the black with the yellow stitching i hope we get this in the uk you've got an amg decal going across the front aluminium here of course, you've got the full AMG steering wheel, but this is as you would five in the 35s as well. The AMG drive control units here where you can choose your modes and pretty much the rest of it is as you would find in say, the 35 versions of the car. There's not a massive change in terms of trim. And this is, I think, something that AMG is doing on purpose that every single AMG, regardless of so-called level, feels and looks the same in terms of UI, materials, steering wheels, look, etc. I understand that, but I do think there should be a bit of a differentiation for the 45. I would have liked to have seen perhaps more use of Dynamica and leather over some of the more plasticky bits in the car, uh, just to differentiate it to the 35, because I suspect this car is going to end up being circa 60-ish K in the UK, and it's a lot of money, um, and when you see the plastics, they might irk you. But generally speaking, what I love about the CLA 45S versus the A45, you get that higher kind of dashboard that you get in coupes and you really do feel that. And you're gonna see when I go out on the track later that it makes a difference in terms of how you feel when you're driving as well. It just feels a little bit more grown up. Now, of course, you've got MBUX, which is Mercedes-Benz user experience, which we've covered many, many times before. I will leave a link below as to the videos that, that have covered it essentially. It's the best operating system they've ever made and frankly the best I've ever tried in any car. Um, and you will check those videos to understand why I'm saying that. The AMG version is great. You get the Super Sport display here, just like the GT. Uh, you get AMG track base where you can record your zero to 60s, etc. Save it all in your driver profile. Thought it might be a good idea to show you the rear in this car as well. I'm 5'10", I've got good head height still here. It wasn't like that in the previous CLA. It feels a lot more like I was sitting in a C63. So if you were fearful of there being less room, don't worry, it's actually quite roomy in this car. I've got a lot of elbow room, I've got a lot of play. You could get, I think, three adults of my size. I use the term adult very use <laughs> loosely. Uh, three adults of my size in the back here quite comfortably. And then the boot is a really good size as well. Check that out. So if you want more space versus A45 in a traditional kind of sedan way, this is a good option, guys. But the rest of it is exactly as you expect. What you want to hear is what the car sounds like. So what I'm gonna do is do the old AMG trick of the louder startup when you hold the paddle. So start the car. You get a nice startup with some burbles going there, which is cool. Although, then if you start to rev it, No 
pops and bangs, unfortunately. I think this is to do with regs and stuff going forward, but it does bang a bit when you're driving. So let's take this out on the track and see how the CLA 45S tries to keep up with an AMG GTR. Right guys, now CLA 45S on the track. I'm gonna be thinking a little bit more about AMG coupes on this one and then directly comparing to what we felt with A45. Is there any difference? Is it really discernible? We're gonna find out now. Now this car is a whole different animal, isn't it? It's a very, very different car, what with the new Formatic Plus system. It's not the very simple, in comparison, whole deck system of the previous 45s. We've got a much, much more technical engine with way better cooling than before, more power, and I suspect the ability of much more power in the future. What is that going to translate like? And I'm more curious, as I said, with the CLA, how does it differ compared to the A45, if at all, on track? So I've done a lap and a half now already. Um, feels like a more grown up car just sitting in it, the CLA. You know, your dashboard is all a bit higher, a bit like you expect in a coupe when you go from C63 Saloon to C63 Coupe. And generally, the suspension and everything, because it's a longer car, um, it's not the hatchback format. It just feels a bit more grown up. Biggest change from last gen to this gen on handling has to be the almost complete negation of understeer. Something all the drivers here agree on really changes the character of the car. You really feel it on track. That's the clever part of the new AMG torque control in the Formatic Plus in action really get a nice neutral feeling when driving this compared to the last car. But like with the A45, you've got some brilliant steering feedback out of this. I recently praised Porsche for doing probably some of the best in the world. I think AMG are right up there with them on this. Every car that they take, even the small 35s and 53s, just have brilliant steering feedback. And the new 45 series, pleased to report, exactly the same. You know where the wheels are, you get the right feedback at the right time, and when you're chasing the head of the AMG Driving Academy, it's a little bit important that you have that. The other thing I was worried about this 45 series is, go is that it was going to be underpowered, um, and it doesn't feel like it. It's not like the old car that kind of whistled out in the end. That extra, that push that the S model has to 421. You know, you're getting close to like M3 power there, aren't you? So rapid, just like we found with the A45S on track as well. Really find it hard to believe that this is a CLA. And that's how it feels. It feels like a very, very capable and powerful car. The engine is really, really good. There's no lag at all. Works in tandem with the new eight speed really well. The gearbox shifting exactly when you want it to. And the power just builds and builds and builds. It doesn't feather away. I'm loving this aspect of this car. But where the A45, I felt, felt a little bit, as you'd expect a hatchback to feel on a circuit. Um, I really like the feel of the CLA45 doing this kind of business. It just feels a bit more sure of itself. I'm sure the difference is negligible in between the two of them and only driving them back, back to back as I'm doing it now. It may just be the interior differences and the suspension that I'm feeling more than anything else. I never thought it'd be fun to drive a CLA45 on track. Never thought I'd be chasing an AMG GTR and not looking like a complete moron doing it. This car is doing it really well. I'm having fun. And isn't that what it's all about? I know only five to 10% of people ever track a car like this, if you're lucky. But the fact that this car can do it and do it looking so damn good, Potentially, one of the most exciting coupes that AMG now make. Got the AMG real sound coming into the cabin from the engine and the intakes. So you get more inside, less outside. It's the way of the world at the moment. But I'm gonna explore sound properly with you when we take this car on the road shortly. And really, I wanna see whether this feels any different to our A45 review on the road as well. So guys, with the CLA45S, we've spoken again and again about the GT four-door in the walk-around. That's because it looks so much like that car. And of course, it's taken 
inspiration in terms of the engine tech, Formatic Plus, etc., as well. So I'm really thinking of this rather than something akin to A45. I want it to be a bit more grown up like the four door. We found that on track, it felt a bit more comfortable, and I'm finding that on the road as well. So I'm going to talk about suspension first. Where the A45 was quite juddery, if you've seen my video, if you haven't, link is down below. This one is a lot more supple, it seems, in the suspension. It really gives it a much more grown up type of ride and you feel like you're driving a much more executive car, something that can do the luxury side a lot better than the A45 can. And really, for me, that makes it a bit more of a compelling choice for a daily car than the A45S is. You still get similar sound, although a little bit less because, of course, this is a sedan type of car rather than the hatchback, which has no space in between you and where the exhaust is. But it still sounds pretty good. It's that same new 45S sound, obviously muted. If you're used to the old CLA, it's going to be less in terms of noise. This is the way that all cars are going. It's not just this car or just AMG. All the manufacturers have to deal with this now. But you can make it play. And the bang you get at the end of it is really nice as well. Let's try that again. I like that classic 45 sound that is. You expect that at the top of the rev limit. Now this car does have an exhaust button, but it's not your typical just opening the valves one. There's a new system in AMG, it's called AMG Real Sound. Now what this system does, unlike say BMW Active Sound, which would pump in pre-recorded sounds into the cabin, this takes sound from the exhaust system itself live and pumps that through the speakers into the cabin. Because things have to be quiet outside by law, this is a nice workaround by AMG to give you the real sound of the car, at least inside for the driver and passenger enjoyment. I'm really behind them on this one and I think they've taken the right decision to at least bring real, genuine sound into the cabin and not fake stuff. Of course, like all of you, I still prefer the good old days, but we have to accept that the world is changing, as are the laws. So kudos to AMG for at least finding some kind of decent workaround. Speaking of the rev limit, it goes all the way up to 7,200 now in the S model. The bulk will change where the other one was restricted to about six and a half. Again, this engine, it is the highlight of the new 45 series. You get a natural power curve. Ignoring the sound for a minute, if it was just the feel and the response of the engine, it would really remind you of the 4-litre V8 that's used in the GT, the C63, and all the other cars. Again, for me, that's been the highlight. I wasn't expecting it to be this exciting as an engine. I think the sound could do some work, but the response, the gearbox as well, the 8-speed, it's all very, very good. And as far as the steering goes, it feels even better on normal roads like this. But don't let that fool you into thinking that this is a cheap way to get an AMG GT four-door. You guys may have seen that I picked mine up recently, as I mentioned at the start of this video. That thing is almost 650 brake horsepower, and it is an absolute monster. This, you've got to think of it as chasing the tail of the M3 instead in that type of horsepower category. Now to the question of why I prefer this over the A45, it is a more grown-up car. It's got styling that matches the flagship four-door coupe that AMG make. The suspension is more sorted. On track, it felt hardly different, just a lot more comfortable. Again, no understeer from it. And whereas the previous CLA was just a compromise in every single area, this one is improved in every single area. With the A45, it's a bit more of a hooligan, as I said. This car it allows you to do the best of both worlds. You chuck it into race mode and it'll do a similar thing to the A with less juddering on these kind of roads which are very similar to the UK. It's just a very compelling car to have. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that first look at the CLA 45S. I really enjoyed it. I think it's my pick of the 45 bunch, maybe even the shooting brake. I'll try and get that one in the UK if we can. So if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe and I'm gonna shoot off into the distance once again. See ya.